Hey guys, what's up? My name is Sandu. Today I'll be testing a duct that sounds really good. It is built from a single block of aluminium. It uses a dual duct chip configuration. It's very affordable and yet is the cutest one you'll ever see. I present to you the Topping D50S. Let's check it out together, friends. D50S is an updated version of the D50 and if you are wondering what exactly was changed and improved, let's take a closer look. The biggest change is the added Bluetooth receiver on the D50S. Topping implemented the best Bluetooth chip currently available on the market, the CSR 8675 from Qualcomm. This one is capable of receiving AAC, CBC, APTX, APTX Low Latency, APTX HD and LDAC for up to 990 kilobytes per second wireless transmission. This is a Bluetooth 5.0 capable chip uh, and the included antenna will surely help a lot in maintaining a stable and clean wireless signal that should withstand few concrete walls and cover a much larger area. Instead of going for free OPA 1612 op amps like they did on D50, newest one has only two of them and another deep 8 socketed LME49 720 op amp. I know this ship pretty well and this change I think impacted the channel crosstalk quite a lot. It sits now at an impressive minus 130 decibels compared to just minus 116 on D50. Topping used the same op amp in their flagship series, so D70 and DX7 Pro are also using them, so this is a very good sign in my book. D50S comes with a much needed remote control, especially for us speaker files, this is a very welcomed addition. D50S is a bit heavier since the Bluetooth PCB socket and Bluetooth antenna on the back added a little bit of weight. Apart from that, both use the same DAC chips, USB input chips, have the same size and shape. It came double boxed, obviously, but what I liked about uh, this box is that it is really small, looks mostly like a smartphone box and everything was squeezed inside really clever. Inside it you will find the D50S unit, a screw type Bluetooth antenna, a much needed remote control, a USB Type-A to USB Type-B connection cable, a DC cable that powers the unit, this cable has an USB Type-A connector on the other side. What is kind of missing from the package is the external power supply where the USB Type-A cable should be plugged in. Of course, it also comes with a warranty card and in typical topping fashion, there is a super technical user manual, the type I like the most. Topping published the actual measurements they performed on D50S using the best audio precision analyzers on the planet. If you are really into measurements, the included manual has them all. Design-wise, it is super cute, super small, but in the same time, it's really heavy in the hand. Here are two Lego minifigs and a banana for scale. It is super cute, super small, but in the same time, seems really heavy in the hand. It weighs 510 grams, that's more than one pound, and it gives the impression of a really well-built and solid device. Its body was made from a single solid aluminum brick milled on a CNC machine. It is a unibody design without any visible screws. It has only four of them underneath, so fit and finish I think it is excellent. Since it is so small with a dimmable display, the wife acceptance factor is really high in this one. Seriously guys, this is the best looking single-ended only duck I put my hands on. It looks really like a tiny version of Mac Mini with a tiny display in the middle. Front panel looks clean and simple, on the left there is a double function button, a long press will turn it on or off and a short press will enter the menu. In the middle there is a small but clear LCD screen that will show you the selected input, four of them, the volume level, the media type, so PCME or DSD, and the sample rate. On the right there is a four direction joystick that helps uh, navigating through the menu. A short press on it will mute or unmute the D50S, left and right will change the digital input and up and down will change the volume level. On the back you have your DC 5 volt input, a Bluetooth antenna socket, three digital inputs, so USB optical and coaxial, and the standard ACA line out. Checking out the menu options, a short pressing the on-off button enters the menu where you can select seven digital filters programmed on the hardware level directly in the duct chip. You can change the brightness of the LCD screen with three positions and an auto position, probably with an ambient light sensor. Auto settings at on or off, if engaged, D50S will automatically turn on when it detects a digital signal incoming and will turn itself off if no signal is detected. Bluetooth on or off, if you don't plan on using its Bluetooth receiver then I recommend turning it off so it, the case would be cooler. Once you engage it, search for it with your smart device and connect to D50S and stream some music wirelessly. It's that simple. Factory reset, it's basically self-explanatory. 
What I really like on D50S and is liked on D50 and DX7 Pro is that you can control its every feature only by accessing the menu. With D70 and DX7 Pro you needed the remote control to dim the display and change the filter settings. In terms of tech specs, how on earth Topping was able to squeeze inside not one top of the line AES 9038Q2M chip but two of them for the best signal to noise ratio this chip can offer. It is much bigger brother, DX7S has also those but it also three times the size and is double the price. As I said, Bluetooth is handled by the best receiver chip and combined with a detachable antenna D50S should cover a big open area or even an apartment pretty easily. Before going deep into its performance, in typical sound news fashion, I have some tips for you. So first of all, as you might recall, I hold my benchmark HPA4 at uh, highest ranks, as I know this is not only a very good device at playing music, but it's also a very good tool that is putting any digital source at its magnifying glass. And any imperfection uh, that uh, source will have will not hide from its gaze. You'll never hear the noise floor of the HPA4. However, if the source that is feeding it has a little bit of noise, HPA4 will show that to you very easily. I first connected D50S to the frontal uh, USB port of my desktop PC and there it was. The noise floor was very obvious uh, as a low intensity hum and it basically covered all my songs. I double checked all my cables, everything was just fine, but the hiss uh, was coming from uh, D50S. I then fed it with the external power brick that I uh, borrowed from a smartphone, something like this one. And finally the noise floor was uh, much lower, uh, almost undistinguishable, yet again as well able to hear it very easily, uh, but I needed to raise the volume up on the HPA4 for that. So much better results I think, but uh, I was still not very happy with the result. I then decided to power it by an external power bank, something like this one, and boy, what a change, a very big change. Clouds disappeared, windows opened to my music and there were angels singing to me. Joking of course, the noise floor was much lower and it dropped to a point where I can't detect it anymore. So if you have a D50 or a D50S, I strongly recommend at least trying an external power bank. Obviously the power bricks of our smartphones are very different, so one will be better at filtering mains noise and the other one might not filter it at all. But uh, you should know that Topic even developed an external power supply for the D50S, that one is called P50, and that should provide clean power if you don't want to search for the best power brick or for a huge capacity power bank, P50 should be your next logical step. Okay everyone, I think it's time to listen to some music. And first I listened to David Bowie, Starman, the remastered version. And it, of course, it revealed the shortcomings of the older recording, yet the musical and catchy nature of this song remained basically the same. So the guitar plugs uh, sounded quite real and very pleasing to me. Uh, David's voice was like whispering directly into my brain uh, at the start of the song. So the chorus uh, throws his voice into background and I felt that uh, really easily. I liked that D50S is capable of showing me depth information and uh, layering even on this uh, mediocre recording. At 3 minute and 8 second mark the mid-range kicked in really heavily and all the instruments including the David's voice uh, were chanting together in a crowded uh, moment. Yet the final result was not crowded at all and I've heard even uh, some, some space between each note. I then moved to Paranoid Android by Radiohead and I think this song has so much information that it plays basically with my imagination. Uh, this is the perfect song for uh, dynamic range tests, for the frequency response and for the detail retrieval I think. So the bells on the left side um, that are hidden basically into the mix are so easy to spot. So um, even the guitars are sounding alive and not metallic at all. Uh, the vibration of the voice has a longer decay I think and the vocal cords I like scratching my eardrums a bit. This song has some very deep moments and I think D50S was able to put every instrument on its shelf uh, where it belongs. When everything exploded at the 2 minute and 54 second mark, dynamics exploded as well, so carrying a lot of slam in the bass department and a lot of uh, fast transients in the treble. This is an engaging moment and without noticing it I started uh, tapping my feet. Uh, basically a sign that I am enjoying uh, its overall performance and uh, everything just clicked into place. 
If you listen to Leonard Cohen, never mind between the 7 and 9 second mark, so basically just for 2 seconds uh, you have a very revealing source, you will feel the increase in uh, background noise and uh, like just a little distortion before uh, Leonard opens his mouth. And this small defect was easily heard on D50S and of course uh, his voice sounded more intimate, uh, it is almost bothering at times, especially listening on headphones like he blows uh, air directly into your brain, um, into your ears. So uh, D50S uh, easily moves a lot of air uh, since it is uh, faster paced I think and doesn't have issues with a rise in dynamics. So I think uh, mid bass in the background is pretty clear sounding, it is always uh, there, uh, borrowed uh, very deep but never steps into the light. The much higher energy of Rage Against the Machine take the power back. Even at the 4 second mark it already started uh, showing me crazy fast executed drums that carried lots of air and slam. The chorus carried so much energy I couldn't help myself that obviously some hand banging followed with some air guitaring like I was the air guitar world champion. I then listened to the next song uh, Balls on Parade again by uh, Rage Against the Machine and there is a hidden hum somewhere between the 3 minute and uh, 3 minute and 3 second mark again only for only for 3 seconds uh, that is the noise of the guitar amplifier being engaged and with uh, lower quality sources uh, that uh, hum or noise uh, is not uh, heard so easily but with D50 this noise uh, became so obvious that uh, I'm hearing it from afar without closing my eyes so I, I'm actually pretty shocked uh, how detailed, how snappy and how fast uh, D50 sounds uh, with every tune I thrown at it. So calming myself I decided to listen to some uh, Rachmaninov, uh, Rhapsody of a theme of Paganini. Uh, it is a masterpiece performed on piano and again there are multiple times um, when I felt that the uh, fingers are touch, uh, touching the keys or that the feet is touching the pedals of the piano. This is an incredible detailed performance and I think that the sound stage level uh, increased tremendously in size as the track itself was recorded basically in a much uh, bigger area, much wider space and I felt how uh, musical notes just uh, flew much farther away from, uh, from me without uh, decaying too fast. So this track I think is a very good example how, of how enveloping a sound uh, should uh, sound in a speaker bass setup as uh, notes I think was delivered from uh, different angles towards me uh, it was like some magic trick uh, happened with my uh, speakers. So yeah, topping D50S can be gentle if needed, it can be hard kicking, it can be mean and loud, it can even be intimate uh, like uh, how uh, Leonard Cohen showed me, or open wide uh, with tons of layers like uh, Rachmaninoff sounded. So the more I listened to it, the more I started feeling um, uh, much bigger pressure on me, uh, because there should be some nasty ugly cons on, uh, with this device. It should fail with some music and yet it didn't. So the frequency response I think it is super linear and straight as a line so uh, as most ESS sub designs are having nowadays. Um, there is obviously some few exceptions that sounded not so great. Sub bass was fast, was light on its feet. Uh, it struck hard and of course it gone deeper into the mix. So I think obviously the sub bass performance is actually very good. Everything down to uh, 30 Hz area was filled with my entire body. So it's of course it's deep reaching, uh, it's layered, it's detailed, uh, it is also controlled uh, without any flabbiness. Um, mid bass performance I think is not elevated like how some uh, other units are doing in this price range. It is super linear and very defined and very clear sounding. So there are multiple times when I spotted uh, bass layers that hit me like waves on a shore. So I think there is nothing to complain in the mid bass department. As for the mid-range, I'm glad that Topping didn't go for a V-shaped uh, sound signature like uh, SMSL uh, did with their M500. So D50S by comparison is not shying in showing off all those uh, mid-frequencies at their best. When my music asked for a smooth and musical uh, mid-range, I think D50S delivered those uh, pretty easily. And when tracks um, demanded a technical and deep-reaching mid-range, I think again D50S was able to be technical without being clinical. Uh, as for the treble, I think it is extended to the subsonic uh, treble area, so everything is uh, pretty outlined, very revealing sounding. So the usual suspects like the cymbal crashes, like the double drums, carried uh, a lot of energy, sounded clearer with a very sharp outline. So treble wasn't clinical, I think, uh, or didn't, it didn't sound bright or something like that. Uh, it was just extended and never harsh to my ears. 
I also compared it with the Topping DX7 Pro, but since I don't want to make this video super long or boring, uh, you should go check out my comparison below. There is a link to the, my uh, written article. Okay guys, so moving on into the conclusion, I think the jump from Topic D50 to D50S looks like a massive one to me. So we have better uh, signal to noise ratio, better crosstalk numbers, dual duct chip configuration and the best Bluetooth receiver chip uh, with the widest codec support looks like the Cherry on top. And performance wise it sounded like a mature, like a serious and very expensive device. In terms of technicalities I think it has everything that I'd want. So it sounds detailed, uh, it sounded extended in the sub bass and upper treble. Uh, it sounds linear without drops in the frequency range. So I think this is an amazing achievement from Topping and if you really don't need an internal headphone amp, uh, some additional uh, digital inputs or the XLR output, I think T50S is an amazing value at uh, 200 bucks. Okay guys, I hope you enjoyed my review. My full in-depth review can be read at my website, there's a link below. Please listen to my music, be positive and I'll see you soon. Cheers guys, bye bye.